welcome back to our class don't forget to subscribe if it is your first time to visit our channel so now since we have seen the cells in detail and how cells reproduce we need to see now when you combine the cells what do you form from what called tissues that's why uh, today we are going to look at animal tissues when you say animal tissues, these are cells combined together. They perform a specific function or they perform a common function. Then you form what you call tissues. Since uh, we have plants and animals, so we're going to look at uh, plant tissues and then we look at animal tissues separately. So in this clip, we're going to be looking at animal tissues. Animal tissues, when you talk about animal tissues, you are talking about... Um, cells which share a common function it should be a, either a special or it should be um, a common function yeah it means that they they, they they perform if it is for protection is for protection is for um the maybe absorption is for absorption if it is for secretion is for secretion you'll find out there are so many cells which are performing that specific function these are organized in different tissues that make up organisms uh, in the various system if you look at the some of the systems we have in our body number one we have uh, the digestive system you find a lot of tissues different kind of tissues in the digestive system then number two you have what called the excretory system uh, this one uh, sometimes people confuse digestive system and excretory system or the wastes of the digestive system and the excretory system uh, feces is not an excretory uh, waste feces is undigested material when you talk about excretory you're talking about sweating uh when you urinate you urinate some um uh, nitrogenous wastes. The wastes as a result of the cell functioning, the products that these cells produce, the unuseful products are what you call the excretory uh, products. So basically excretory system is dealing with uh, like skin, uh, kidney. It's talking about those ones. While digestive system is talking about the way how you, 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 you eat from the mouth until the anus. Then um, you have circulatory system. This one is dealing with the blood. How is the blood circulating in the uh, in the body? So uh, we call it circulatory system. It's made up of different uh, tissues. We will see uh, them. So what are some of the uh, the different types of these animal tissues? These animal tissues, we have what called epithelial tissues we're gonna look at them in detail because they are found outside in most cases they're found outside uh, an organ yes then you have the connective tissues these ones they connect one organ with another or one part of the body with another part of the body then we have the muscle tissues these ones are very important in locomotion movement then you have the nerve tissues these ones are very important in uh, sending signals, sending signals. When I, I call you that Bussi, for example, you respond to me. But how is this sound moving in this, uh, in your body? Is being transmitted um, in your body from the ears to the brain by means of the nerves. So those small cells which are responsible for transmitting this signal, they are like wires in our body. We call them nerves. So um, let's look at uh, these cells um, uh, in, in small detail. When we talk about epithelial tissue, these are tissue that covers maybe an organ. They line, like they make the lining, yes, the top part of it, or they secrete. They secrete mucus. Some of you have. Uh, mucus in the in the nose when it's winter you see them what causes that mucus where is it coming from yes it is coming from what you call the epithelial tissues it comes from the what or it comes from the cells 
uh, called epithelial cells. Then muscle tissues, these ones are very important for movement. Movement of uh, different body parts. Like your arm, the, the left can move without the right moving. The right can move without the left uh, moving. Or the whole body can move. Then connective tissues, they, they, they connect different parts. Different parts, basically very important for support. This tissue, they bind and support other what? Other tissues. Then we have the nerve tissue. We, we, we saw them also. Tissues that transmit, that take the chemicals. They, they take the message from one point to another. When, when, when for example, I pinch you uh, on, the, on, on the hand, for example, you'll find out that the, the, the eyes will cry. I'll ask you a question. Did I touch the eyes? You will say, no, why are you using the eyes to cry? Then it means that the hand, yes, is connected to the brain and there is the way how the brain is connected to the what? The eyes. What takes the information, the brain to interpret and then, then back to the eyes so that you can start crying to see that it is painful or to show me that is what? It is painful are what you call the nerve tissues. So, um, here is an example. You have the epithelial cells or epithelial tissues. They look like this. You have the nerve tissues. They look like this. And then you have the muscle tissues. They look like this. Then you have the connective tissues. They connect. You can see them. They can connect. They are like entangled. So uh, we're going to look at these cells individually, like one by one, one by one until we finish them. Let's look at epithelial tissues. The first example of epithelial tissue. Remember we said that this one is very important in covering or lining or secretion. Covering, lining, secretion. Yes. The first example is squamous, which means flat. These cells are flat. Number two, we have the columnar. They are like columns. Tall. Column. You know a column, eh? A column is like this. So that's why it's called columna. Columna. Columna means tall. You need to know this. Squamous means flat. Columna means tall. Okay, this columna could be stratified or it could be just a simple columna. Yes, when you talk about columna, yes, it could be columns with different layers, yes, or it's just one column without any other layer on top. It's like a, a house, it could be a double story, or it could be just a simple house. If it's a simple house, we just call it simple columnar. It's just a double story, like it has different layers, then we will say stratified. Stratified, strata, stratified comes from what is strata, which means a layer. So it has different layers. So number one, squamous. Number two, columnar. Number three, tuboidal. It's like a cube. Yeah, you know, you know, ice cubes in, 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 in the fridge. Yeah. So these cells, they are like those ice cubes. Then you have the ciliated. Ciliated, this one means they have the hair-like structures. So when you talk about cilia, it, 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 it has hair. And then you have pseudo stratified. Pseudo, not pseudo. No, 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 no. Not pseudo. Uh -uh. It is pseudo stratified. If someone says that you are pseudo, it means that you are false. You are not real. You are not real. You are false. Pseudo, false, stratified from the word stratum, which means a layer. So false layers. False layers. So which means it seems to be in layers, but is not. It looks like layers, but it's not. Let's look at them in pictures and then we see. So we say that squamous, it means flat. If you look at them, they're just flat. They're just flat. Yes, simple. However, it can be squamous, but stratified with the different layers. It's just one cell, but now there is another one. It's like now a double story. Then you have columna. Yes, it's like columns. You see? They're like columns, they're like columns. It could be columnar, simple columnar, or it could be stratified. It means that there is another layer on top, which is columnar also. So it, it forms layers, so it becomes stratified columnar. 
So when you're identifying them, look at the shape, look at it. Is it simple or it is uh, uh, complex? If it is complex or it has many layers, then you talk about the layers. If it is, it is having only one layer, then you talk about uh, it's just simple. Then when you talk about cube, you see they are like ice cubes. Yeah? They are like ice cubes, like ice cubes. Yes, yeah, so it's cuboidal, it's like a cube. So look at the shape, then identify the shape, then that's it. Then we have ciliated, ciliated, they are hair-like. Hmm? So uh, it means that I can have, if you look at this, it's columnar, yes? Then it means that if I want to name this, I will say columnar ciliated. If this one has hair on top, I will say chuboido ciliated. If squamous has hair on top, then I will say squamous ciliated. Or squamous stratified, meaning that squamous with layers. So, what about when it is pseudo? It's, it's, if you look at this, you think it is, this is a layer, yet it's not a layer. Yes? So it is pseudo stratified. It's false layers. So it's not having layers, but it looks like it has layers. That's the meaning. So uh, if you look at this, you need to note. You need to take a note. They are saying that. This epithelial can either be simple, stratified, or with the cilia or without cilia, depending on the location in the body. So you can have simple squamous or stratified squamous. You see? Simple squamous or stratified squamous. You have simple tuboidal or stratified chuboidal. So if it is just a simple house, if it's the double story, you see? So it means that this is simple or it has many layers, stratified chuboidal. Then this one is pseudo stratified, is just a false, false layer, but in the form of columns, columnar. Then you have simple columnar, it could be just simple without any layers on top or stratified columnar. You see that now it has one layer and then it has the second layer. One layer, second layer. So you have to know when they give you a question, you must know how to identify. Look at the cell. For example, if you want to, uh, they ask you, you can look at its property. They say, okay, it is, look at the shape, it's columnar. Is it two layers or uh, one layer? So it is one layer, so it's gonna be simple columnar. Does it have hair on top or not? It has hair on top. I can say simple columnar ciliated. You see? Now this one, it is columnar, yes? How many layers? It is two. So it means that it can't be simple because it has different layers. So it's gonna be stratified, which kind of shape? is columns so it's gonna be stratified columnar does it have hair on top no so i can't talk about ciliated so it's gonna be stratified columnar if it had some hair on top then it becomes stratified columnar ciliated so uh, basically uh, that's how you can uh, identify these uh tissue what are some of the functions of uh these cells all right, uh -huh. we are saying that line the body surfaces inside and outside. Inside and outside, they line the body surfaces. Number two, they make up glands. Remember, we say that they are very important in secreting. So, remember, glands are very important in secretion. So, they make up glands. So, glands are made up of epithelial tissues. Look at your saliva. Where is saliva coming from? Do you have a tank in, in your mouth? No, you have glands. Those are the glands where the saliva is coming from. When you see food coming and you are hungry, you start to salivate. It means that the glands release these secretions. So they're very important in secreting sweat 
enzymes, hormones, milk. Wow. Talk about mothers, then you talk about milk. Milk, so all this. So allows gases, water, nutrients, amino salts in solution to pass through. It means that they can filter. They can filter what is going through and what is not going through. Lastly, and on the list, we have what called a goblet cells. Goblet cells are very important in secreting also, secreting mucus. If you look at your digestive system, if you look at your pancreas, it has what called the goblet cells. If you look at your digestive system, the ileum, we're gonna look at this in grade 11, that goblet cells. Goblet cells, they are very important in secreting mucus. And then um, we are saying that um, cilia, uh, cilia, they are very important. Uh, they remove dust particles from our internal surfaces. If you look at the breathing system, the respiratory system, when you breathe, you, so, some of us will stay in, in, in dusty areas whereby we don't need this dust in our bodies. We don't need it in the lungs. We don't need it. So what should we do? We don't have any option, but the cilia in our um, respiratory system, in our breathing system, yes, they try to trap this dust. How does it, uh, how do this cilia trap dust? Okay, look at yourself when you go to a dairy uh, area, dusty area, and then you look at your eyelashes and the uh, eyelids. You will find out that, uh, oh, they have some dust, they have trapped the dust. So that dust did not enter into your eyes. That's how they work. So it means that they work in that way. They trap that dust so that the air which enters you is a little bit clean. So the air which falls onto your eyes is a little bit what? Clean. Number two. Number two is muscle tissues, muscles. Eh? Some of you go to the gym, you start making muscles. Eh? You want to be big, big, ne? yeah, all right, or muscular. So it means that now we're gonna look at the muscles. What is really happening in, 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 in the muscles? All right, muscles are made up of muscle fibers. It means that they have some fibers, small, small, small. Like, if you look at a big wire, it has some small, small, small wires. So the muscle fibers, when you combine them, they form what called the muscle tissue. So the nuclei, the nucleus, remember a cell has a nucleus. The nuclei, if it's one's nucleus, if there are many, we call them nuclei, found on side. They are supposed to be on side. Why? Because they are long, so that they can provide at least a surface for, for, these are uh, fibers. Uh, nuclei uh, found on the side may be more than one. Why do we more than one? Why do we need more than one? Remember the nuclei is very important in controlling the functioning of, of, of the cell. So if you have more than one, it means that at least it, it, these muscles, they can be more active, more active. Then you're saying that um, striated, striated, means it has uh, stripes, stripes. It comes from what is stripes, then you call it striated. If you look at it in the picture, you'll find out that it looks, it has stripes. If it is a shirt, we call it, you call it checked. Has contraction uh, fibrils, which you call the myofibrils. This, this, these stripes are called the myofibrils. They are very important in contraction. If your muscle doesn't con relax when it has contracted, you will get what you call a muscle pull. You won't be able to move. You will stay the way you are as a result of this contraction and relaxation has not taken place. Let's look at it. There are three types of muscle tissues. Number one, skeletal striated voluntary muscles. Skeletal from the word skeleton, it means that they are attached to the skeleton. Do we have some muscles which are not attached to the skeleton? Yes. Skeletal striated voluntarily. Voluntarily, it means that you, you use them on your own will. 
rise up the hand guys you rise up the hand if i want i rise if i don't want i don't rise so it means that you control them voluntarily with your own will number two cardiac striated involuntary muscles when you talk about cardiac whenever you talk about cardiac you're talking about the heart the human heart so the heart is called cardiac involuntary because you don't have control over it striated it means that it has some uh, stripes so it's cardia striated involuntary muscles then number three you have smooth and striated it means that these smooth they don't have the stripes it's just smooth as if you are eating ice cream smooth when it's going and you don't even feel anything you just feel the sweetness a smooth 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 and striated involuntary however they are involuntary you don't have control over them where can you find this digestive system when the food is here by the throat is going the esophagus is going down you can't bring it back even if you want it no 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 no. you don't have control over it when it reaches the stomach it still moves even if you're upside down it will go still it will go so it means that you don't have control over it so whenever you say involuntary you don't have control over it heart when you are sleeping there is beating when you are awake it's beating no one is controlling your heart what are some of the functions of the muscles let's look at the functions of the muscles number one for voluntary action so muscles are very important for voluntary action walking lifting so those things are voluntarily done they are voluntarily done it means that you do them on your own will so what does it mean it means that um uh, these muscles contract and relax and then walking and lifting and other movements can be brought about number two for involuntary actions they bring about involuntary action things which you do without your own will contracting and relaxing of organs heart you don't have control over heart blood vessels you don't have control over blood vessels bladder hey when it's time for you to pee it's time okay you will find out that when you go to pee okay someone said that no i can hold the the the, the urine yes you can hold it but go start urinating and then try to, to control it you will see that you will not urinate on your your clothing even if it's lady you will urinate it on your clothing ladies comes to to this point whereby if someone comes and they scares you yes you end up urinating into your clothing urinate in your clothing why it's because you don't have control over your bladder yes so suddenly the bladder just leases and then the urine comes out yeah stomach you don't have control over your stomach yes when they are, uh, these muscles are contracting your job is to eat put the food in the stomach leave the rest how is this stomach breaking down this food even you don't know when you are busy moving up and down but you don't know that actions are taking place inside your body so muscles are very important for voluntary actions are also very important for involuntary actions there are three types of muscles number one skeletal muscles the one which are attached to the skeleton these are the one we have seen so they look like this skeletal muscles yes you see they have they have stripes you are they are checked um skeletal muscles connect to the skeleton number two you have smooth muscles they don't have stripes you see they don't have stripes this one they have stripes you see them but this one they don't have they are smooth ice cream né? yeah they are smooth and then three cardiac cardiac which means heart heart muscles heart muscles they look like this eh? they are stripes you see they are checked they are checked they have stripes in if you look at this and this both of them they have what stripes so these are the three kinds of muscles skeletal muscles these ones are, are voluntary that's why you call them skeletal voluntary muscles this one are smooth muscles they're involuntary smooth involuntary muscles and then cardiac they are involuntary you don't have control over your heart cardiac involuntary muscles 
those are the three kinds of muscles when an exam comes you have to know these um uh muscles then uh from there we will start from here with the connective tissues connective tissues <laughs>